A question we might have if we're thinking about how objects are passed between methods is whether they're passed by value or by reference. That is to say, whether we pass uh, sort of the memory address of an object or we, whether we pass the actual object itself. In Java, what actually gets passed is a reference to the object and not the object itself. So we might be tempted to give passed by reference as our answer, but really we're passing the value of a reference to the object. In any case, what you need to have is this mental image. If I'm passing a reference to a house object, I'm not passing the whole house itself, I'm passing its address. That's what's getting passed to any method call that uses an object. So if you imagine the consequences of this idea, suppose I have some student object named stu variable, and then I call a, a method do something to student, and I pass stu variable as a parameter. Well, if do something to student changes stu parameter's name to bill, because both stu parameter and stu variable refer to the same object, that change persists. Stu variable's name is changed to bill even after the execution of do something to student finishes. Now because arrays are objects, it works the same way with them. If you pass an array as a parameter, you're passing the reference to the array and any changes you make are going to persist even after that method finishes running. So you got to be really careful. If you mishandle an array, you're going to have a bad time trying to figure out what went wrong because the changes, the mistakes that you make are going to persist. This means you can do a bunch of things with arrays. For instance, you can return an array using a return statement. And I mean, I mean, let's take a look at some of the things that you're going to be able to do. Suppose I've got a method called sum that takes an array as a parameter, an int array called a, and uh, just creates some local variable result, and it sums all the elements in result and just returns that. Using it super easy, if I have array1 and array2, both of which are full of numbers, I can just call sum of array1 and sum of array2. This method is safe because it doesn't actually make any changes to the parameter array, to the array that comes in. But note, of course, you can't actually use this method with, uh, with arrays of type double or anything else. Now suppose I'd like to copy one array into the other. So take a look at this copy one method. I want to copy the contents of the original parameter into the copy parameter, so these, the second array. Original is, is instantiated before the method copy one is called, and CP is instantiated inside the method. So you can see what's happening here. I'm saying copy equals a new int array, the same length as original, and just go through original, and for every one, assign whatever was in original at that element to the corresponding element in copy. And you can see how we'd call it, right? I have originals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, copies, uh, copies null, it's not instantiated, uh, but of course I trust that it's going to happen in the method, and I can call copy 1 of original and CP. Of course there's a bit of a problem here. Uh, you know, when copy 1 finishes, we would hope and we would expect that CP would refer to copy, but this is not the case. The new array that we instantiated in the method copy1 was assigned to copy, not to cp. That's copy the local variable, the parameter inside the method, not cp, which is what we would have wanted. In fact, we're more likely to get what we want if we make our copy method return an array of type int. Version 2 of this method takes only a single parameter, but we add a return type int array, and we declare a local variable copy, which uh, gets a new array object of the same length as the parameter. We do the copy, and then we return that copy. And you can see we've got this nice assignment statement, int array cp equals whatever gets returned from copy to a ridge. Now we're happy. This worked wonderfully. Before you close up shop, I would recommend one thing before continuing. Uh, make sure you can write a method that takes an array as a parameter, an array of ints, and as a second parameter takes an int value that you want to search for, and it finds the index where that search value exists and returns it, or negative one if it's not present in the array. Make sure you can do that, should be real quick. After that, take a look at these questions. Make sure you're clear on what happens when you use the assignment operator with two array variables. Explain what makes copying an array tricky, especially if you're using another method. You can think about the examples that we talked about today in the lecture. Write a method that, that uh, returns the average of a bunch of numbers in a double array, and take a look at this last method specification and tackle it if you would be so kind. That's it for today.